Janet Dorr. We're honored that she's with us again. Janet is a medical intuitive and master energy healer. Janet uses her multidimensional gifts of perception to uncover the root cause of her client's health issues. She works with people in an empowering way to identify the underlying energies, which can include suppressed emotion and limiting beliefs, ancestral energies, traumatic experiences, oaths and vows, and attached entities. Janet clears discordant energies and restores her clients' divine blueprints. People who work with Janet report rapid shifts in health conditions, reduction in pain, regaining a peaceful state, improvements in relationships, and feeling more empowered. To achieve these powerful transformations, Janet works with many beings in the non-physical realms, including archangels, ascended masters, goddesses, and galactic beings who are supporting Earth's ascension, such as the Arcturians and Pleiadians. So Janet has a gift offer, uh, a link that um, we have on our show website. If you're not on the show page, I can tell you that it's bit.ly forward slash transform hyphen your hyphen energy. So bit.ly forward slash transform dash your dash energy. And you can reach out to Janet to book a private intuitive energy session on heal.me. You just do a search for her name and she'll come up. No problem. Janet Dorr, medical intuitive, master energy healer. And, you know, the testimonials for Janet's work, and I'm one of them because <laughs> I worked with Janet a few years ago when I was in dire straits and it was illuminating and so empowering and so healing. Um, one client is saying my session with Janet was nothing short of amazing. I came with physical issues I wanted help with. She zeroed in on emotional issues that were causing the physical issues and ways I might resolve them at the root. She has an extensive knowledge of health on the levels of mind, body, spirit, and how they interact. Uh, her advice was razor sharp and delivered in a warm, compassionate way. Absolutely, I experienced the, the same. Um, another the testimonial says during an amazing session with Janet, um, she's saying, I released so much grief and darkness from my lungs and heart, uh, from all my all from my ancestors. I feel so much more empowered and energized. Janet is just a master. Um, another testimonial, my one-on-one -on -one session with Janet was powerful and life-enhancing. Uh, her ability to lead you to the root cause of a condition is a rare gift. I agree, truly liberating. And her insightful knowledge and intuitive skills are extraordinary. And um, another testimonial, Janet was the only healer who helped me understand a lifelong issue in just a, a few short minutes. So Janet, welcome. We're so glad you're here. And we're going to be talking about the topic that you chose, which is releasing grief to restore joy, which sounds completely fantastic because so many are dealing with grief right now. So uh, welcome. Really great to have you here. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. And thank you to all the other reports that I've just had the pleasure of listening to. And uh, I echo those opinions. I, uh, you know, a lot of the awareness is shared. I had sh uh, shared as well. And just before I go into my topic, I, oh. I, I had one observation and I made a note uh, because sometimes when people are seeing something come up, such as you know, GMO mosquitoes with malaria with intent to do harm, for example, um, a phrase came in, don't give anything your attention, you don't wish to expand, because yeah. energy flows where attention goes. But, so this comes to your attention, and a person, if they feel disempowered, and feel a bit helpless and move to fear or, oh my gosh, what are they doing? Um, if it comes to your attention, it's because you could do something about it. And although our galactic brothers and sisters are providing tremendous assistance under cosmic law, universal law, they cannot do so unless the request for assistance comes from the realm where the assistance is required. So what does that mean? 
So if it comes to your attention, you see something that's not right, there's some mucking around with nature going on, or um, there's some you know, serious injustices somewhere that need remedy, you drop into your heart and just, because you're a powerful creator, say, what would be the remedy for this? What could be even better than this? If I was running things, what would I, you know, what action would I take? And then pray and ask for assistance. So you can say, and a, a little prayer that I use, shared with me by a very wise energy worker who's many years my senior to me, Mother, Father, God, please take command of this situation and bring it to the highest and best good for all concerned. Very simple prayer. So you see GMO mosquitoes and you go, oh, this is not good. Mother, Father, God, please take command of this situation and bring it to the highest and best good for all concerned. And you can add to it. I ask for the maximum assistance from all realms into the situation of X, whatever the situation is. Now, with your request for assistance and with your prayer to Mother, Father, God, the Ascended Host, angels, masters, galactics, you can choose who you wish to pray to. But if you expand your prayer to say, I ask for the maximum assistance from all realms into the situation of whatever you see needs remedy, bring it to the highest and best for all concerned, even if you're not sure what that is. You have just issued a prayer to which archangels, galactics, ascended masters, the Elohim, uh, the elemental kingdom can now respond. So take that, that's our power. And then you can feel empowered. So one of the things that happens to me is uh, people will talk about these tones we hear in our ears and uh, like, Carolyn's recording this <laughs> on video for us so we could post it on YouTube later. And I'm just chuckling because I've got this big blue dash across my chin. And that's because I've got crystals in the window and the light's coming through and it keeps changing where the color is. So right now, those of you who can't see me, but I'm, I've got like, you know, big blue dash. <laughs> I just, just your special energies that were bringing these rainbow colors. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, light and sparkle is my business. Yes, but. <laughs> oh, wonderful. And and I and and that was so distracting. I can't even remember what I was going to say. So over to you. <laughs> uh, well, we're just calling in divine assistance, and I agree completely. Um, you know, uh, Tom, we had Tom Timor on the show and he talked about the most benevolent outcome prayers that we pray for ourselves and then the benevolent prayers we pray for others. And I use those a lot. And it's pretty much exactly what you're saying. And they're very powerful. They really yeah. are powerful. Calling in all light being or an angelic assistance or however you want to phrase it for this issue. And um, that, you know, that only that which is for the higher good of all occur now. And um, absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that because it's... Oh. Uh, yeah. My thought came, but yes, thank you. Those are very powerful. Pray for yourself, pray, but pray for what you would like to see instead of yeah. what you see. So if you see homeless people, pray that all people everywhere shall be housed. Safe, yes. warm, comfortable housing. All people everywhere shall have food. And then expand and remember our elemental kingdoms. Pray that all life shall have appropriate habitat and housing and all life shall have clean and readily available food and water and now you're including all the realms so i i did um remember what i was going to say many people feeling the <laughs> this light and sparkle on my face is so funny for those of you who can see it it's hilarious um the um uh the sounds that we're hearing a lot of people will say that's tinnitus and my clients will say, what do I do about this tinnitus? And I say, well, what's happening is you're becoming available to perceive the photonic light and the waves of light that are coming in that you previously uh, could not perceive. And so what if you, there's nothing wrong with your ears at all, but rather you're perceiving energy that you previously didn't hear? And it can be quite a cacophony of loud sounds. 
um, I've tuned in and, and sometimes the sounds are requiring my attention. So if I get a continuous um, sound in my left ear, like, well, then I know to say who's calling. It's a phone call. <laughs> who's calling? Janet, this is the Galactic Federation. We need your assistance. So then I step away from whatever I'm doing, go sit in my quiet chair and tune in. And how can I be of service? And they'll bring to my attention, Janet, we wish to bring your attention to a situation developing here or there. We need you to make a call. So in other words, they're aware of something going on, but they cannot under universal law take action until one of us, the request for assistance must come from the realm where the assistance is required. So yes. I, I get a download, what's the situation? And so then I make some calls. Uh, okay, Mother, Father, God, the Galactic Federation, all realms. I ask for the maximum assistance into the situation they've described. And I'm typically getting additional information as well, clear cognizantly, just a download of what all's going on. And so I might see other pieces or have other awareness. And they'll say, please, you know, resolve this, bring this to the highest light, et cetera, et cetera. And I make that prayer and request. And then I say, now, is there anything else that you need from me tonight? And they'll say, no, that was it. Thanks. Boom. Off they go to take action. But I did not know until they rang. So it's like, you rang. You know, <laughs> I'll say to my husband, excuse me, the Galactic Federation are on the phone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I need to go listen and see what's up. So that's an example of how this interplay happens. They cannot just independently observe something and go in and decide to do something about it. They can observe it and somebody here in the earth plane needs to pray and ask for assistance. So if we all appreciate what the galactics are doing for us, please express your thanks and ask them to continue. <laughs> and then they have more authority to continue. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much for that. That's a really lovely reminder. And I love that you are very aware of what the messages are. I have, I, that's a brilliant idea. I don't think I've ever asked to know what the message is. I just go, okay, thank you. That'll come up when it's ready to, or into my conscious mind, but do already connect is brilliant. Absolutely wonderful. Ashtar and I are on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Uh, and, and a funny, a little galactic humor. So the other day we had a beautiful sky, perfectly clear skies, no geoengineering as one of our colleagues was talking about. And I'm so I'm sitting there going, oh, I'm so grateful the sky's so clear. It's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for pure, pure clean air. Well, the next day, you know, it was like, well, we'll show you the other side of duality. So in yeah. comes all of this, you know, heavy duty spraying. And I was getting a little triggered. So I did make some requests, but then I said, Commander Ashtar, could you please bring some ships and just vacuum up this four letter expletive in, you know, in our, in our skies. So I'm sitting there quiet, realizing I'm feeling a little triggered. And so I should, you know, calm down and address that energy and just say, I know this is taken care of, it's done. Thank you, I'm so grateful, blue skies are remaining. So I, I get this reply from Ashtar and he says, four letter expletive, is that a scientific term? <laughs> <laughs> they have great humor. They have great humor, these ascended folk, they really do. <laughs> so, you know, that his response really helped me also, you know, it was very healing to just shift to laughter and and go, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> the stuff that's spraying and raining in on me, yeah. shall I call it, you know? <laughs> what would you call it? <laughs> <laughs> that particular day I was giving it a four letter expletive word. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that's apropos at times. <laughs> um, so, all right, Janet, well, let's look at this issue of releasing grief in order to restore joy. And, so why are there energies of grief in our energy field? Um, even if we haven't lost someone pretty recently over the past year or two, why are they already there? Yes, yeah, so uh, our energies that we have not attended to, dealt with, felt, 
cleared and released accumulate. And they accumulate across all time and space. So we can have grief from other timeline experiences. And yes. if we haven't attended to that or felt it through to completion, released it, accepted our situation, then we come into the body in this incarnation with that energy of grief in, in our emotional body, which then presses in on the physical body. And the memories of what happened, you know, who we lost or who passed over or, you know, the shock of um, a phone call that the husband or the son or something was just killed in a, in a war time. Um, those energies, the, the record is in the etheric record, which is right outside the physical body. And then the emotional body is next. So that's where the grief is there, the sadness. And then the mental body is containing beliefs we have about that experience. Oh, this was so wrong. Whatever it is, the person has concluded. And if they've got a good, bad, right, wrong judgment about something they've experienced, that's contracting their energy field. So then those energies press in. So now our body lovingly is always trying to get our attention so that we can become aware of the energy that we don't see to get us to look here, look there, or we get sick, you know, well, you needed to slow down. So, <laughs> so you know, we gave you a virus for three days, so you could go lie down and be still and not run, a, run about for a few days. So it can be that simple. We just needed some, some time to be quiet. So a virus comes in and the body says, there you go. This is what we need you to do lay down and be still. And so then we do it. But the energy of grief accumulated then from other timelines and can come in from the ancestors through their experiences creates energy signatures in the DNA, which then comes in. Every cell's got DNA in it. So therefore it carries their energy signature of information and energy unresolved. So that's why a person can go, I can't understand why I might be feeling so sad, feeling such loss, feeling such grief, but I can't track it to something in this timeline, in this lifetime that I can associate it with. Now, couple, couple on top of that, that many, many people are very, very sensitive. And so the emotional body is out beyond their physical body quite a ways and out in what's called the astral plane where other people's emotions are also. So if I'm a very sensitive person, I can be very aware of and sensing grief in the collective field, in that emo shared emotional body of energy. For example, on um I believe, which day was it? It was one national, oh, Memorial Day, um, national holiday in the United States. I woke up in the morning and I just felt all of this grief. And I thought, what's going on here? And then I realized, ah, this is a holiday celebrating the loss of people who've lost their lives in war. And so people were feeling into that and remembering their loved ones that passed over in in the service of war, if that's not an oxymoron, I'm not exactly sure, but, you know, in wartime. And so I was aware of the collective field of grief. So I got in my energy field, got it spinning, um, brought it to a higher frequency. So therefore my field was clear of that. And then I felt crystal clear as a bell, but was aware and could just be aware with compassion that others were feeling that. So then I put a post up in Facebook and said, if you happen to be noticing extra grief, it's because, you know, this is when I tuned in, this is what I became aware of. So, you know, you might have a piece of that. And if you don't have a piece of it, you might just be sensing other people's grief, in which case pull your energy back, you know, send compassion and love to all that might have experienced a, a loss of a loved one in a war experience. and. And then you can go about your day because you've taken some action to release it, transmute it with love. 
Oh, that is so wonderful. I'm so glad you point out uh, two really big issues there that a lot of what we uh, resonate with in this life did not begin here. It began in another life, maybe another dimension, could have been another galaxy, <laughs> a parallel life, etc. cetera, yeah. uh, another universe. And, um, and also that we take on uh, what is felt by the masses. And that could be in our own culture. It could be elsewhere. We might be connecting with a culture halfway around the world, even if we've never been to that country. But we have a beautiful, intrinsic, inherent connection to that culture. And if they go through something rough, we really feel it. And um, for instance, I always connected powerfully with Ireland before I ever lived there, before mm -hmm. I even knew you know, anything much about me being part Irish or anything like it. Um, very powerfully connected there. So uh we tend to overlook that because we're taught to overlook that and just to pay attention to what's immediately in front of us or what we can immediately consciously recall has happened to us or our family and um forget it our dna holds so much so many centuries of memories and our ancestors do and you've helped people with ancestral grief and issues um i one time at one point when i had a very bad case of black mold illness um an energy healer said to me she felt that i was dealing with grief because she said we store that in the lungs and is that one of the ways in which grief shows up as a health issue that you've seen yes absolutely um grief can show up in multiple ways but when it's suppressed and we're not aware of it at all than lung issues, asthma, chronic obst obstructive pulmonary disease, um, a person who maybe gets a cold and it settles into their lungs repetitively. You know, those the lungs is the organ where that energy of grief um, will present. So absolutely. It can present other ways also in my, I, I had a lot of suppressed grief when I came into this lifetime. So I found, you know, as a child, if the parents were taking me to a, a funeral service or a memorial service for someone in our extended family who had passed on, that I found it quite overwhelming to be there. And I didn't even know the individual, you know, that we're memorializing other than it's an extended member of the family. So that was a clue for me that I had a lot of grief resonating in my field and other people who were in the audience um, and who were crying and deeply experiencing the grief and loss of that individual. Well, then I was empathing and connecting because I had a lot of unfinished grief in my system. And personally, I did have uh, pneumonia. I guess I have had pneumonia like five times and oh. had that had that pattern of um, earlier in life that a bug would drop into my bronchial tubes and then settle. And sometimes that resulted in pneumonia. So uh, absolutely, it can be very powerful and it really gets your attention and allows you to go deep and get still and, and address it. All right. All right. So you did actually have that illness. It wasn't what people call sort of, you know, um, well, psychosomatic is the wrong term, um, but uh, people talk about um, illnesses sometimes that come on because, say, there's something you don't want to do. I got quite ill before a big piano recital that I was supposed to be part of when I was a teenager, and I did recover in time to be in the recital, and it was all right, but my parents immediately made the connection, whereas I would never have. And um, so you did actually get visited by some bug that settled in your system, but yes. um, maybe on a higher level, your higher self was letting that happen to show you something that you needed to see. Yes, exactly. And yeah. earlier in life, I didn't have the conscious awareness that I have now. So uh, yes, I got quiet. I, I rested. Uh, invariably, there would be some tears shed because... It was an overwhelming experience when you don't breathe well, you know, it can be scary and debilitating. So I was releasing sadness and it was having that healing effect without necessarily me putting two and two together to realize the connection. Um, a very powerful story about grief 
when I married my husband, so I was 22 and he was 26 when we married. And after we, mar we married, um, I would, you know, we would have intermittent moments. And then after I would just cry. And I felt like he wasn't going to be there for me. I was going to lose him. And it, even you can hear it in my voice. This, you know, it's very powerful. And, yes. um, and so we talked about it and he said, what are you crying about? And I said, I, you know, keep having this feeling of dread that you're going to die. Yeah. And, and he didn't know what to do with that, you know, and my guides would say to me, but Janet, he's here now. So enjoy him. <laughs> you know. And then that, that helped me. Okay. Stay in the present moment. You know, something might happen, but for right now we're, you know, this is wonderful. We've married and we're having these, this beautiful relationship. And at one point he said to me, do you suppose it was a past life? So from, for all through the next six or so years, of my early twenties, this energy would come up over and over again. He'd be with me. And then I'd fear that he was going to die. And I really, it felt quite real. So we traveled one time to Spain, uh, uh, just a few years back and we went to Barcelona and in Barcelona, we went in a particular building by one of the famous architects there that it was open. You could see the museum of this home. And I went into one room and I got this, oh my gosh, I've been here before. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had been in that room before. It was the sitting room in the owner's suite. And I, I was starting to get the whole picture. So mm -hmm. as we walked, I said, I, let's go, you know, when we were all done seeing the beautiful museum and, um, and I was going, wow, I just, this big download. We went and sat in a, in a cafe. And as I was walking there, I got the whole thing that we were married in 1918 and we had a young child and the child had died. And my husband found it so difficult. Who's my current husband um, is the same soul that I married in that lifetime and that he found it so difficult, the loss of his son that he chose the opportunity to take the flu that was circulating and die of pneumonia. Oh, so gosh. just a couple of years into our marriage. So this is what I kept tracking to. And why did it feel, feel so poignant is because it was the same soul at rough, not, you know, in my early twenties, not exactly the same age, but, and that, shortly in oh dear you know I feel like you're going to die and that when I got that aha and I got the clarity of what had happened and I shared it with him and I said voila I now understand where all of that you know terror and fear of your imminent death was coming from because it had happened once I got a little older then uh, I passed that age where in the previous relationship he hadn't made it and so then I you know every time any grief would come up I'd go but he's right here enjoys enjoy him and I pull myself back to the present moment you know you don't know if he might die tomorrow but right now he's here so I'm going to just you know be in love and and enjoy so for other people to realize that when we incarnate the the group of souls that we may be our monad that we may be incarnating with, we may incarnate with them over and over and over again in different roles. Well, this time let's get married. Another time, please be my father. Another time, be my mother. And I look after you and your ill health. And and I'm so she, you're so grateful to me for looking after me in older age and ill health that we'll come back and trade because I want to, out of my gratitude, thank you for the honor. So I want to help you. And now I've got a client who's saying, Janet, it's overwhelming. I'm the only one in the family. And obviously I've got a contract or something to look after my mother, but I'm exhausted and she's getting really challenges, <laughs> challenging to look after. And I go look at the energy and go, ah, okay. Well, when you were the mother, 
and you were dying and she was the daughter and she was looking after you, you were not easy to care for. And so you decided that the karmic loop should be that, you know, you would play the role and you would receive the experience of having a an elder, not feeling well, feeling very uncomfortable and being a little bossy and un, ungrateful sometimes. So it's important to understand sometimes when these things up come up to ask ourselves, is there a karmic pattern here? And that yeah. I'm to be forgiving of myself and forgiving of the behavior that I'm seeing in front of me. Because what if that was me last, time, last lifetime? Maybe I was the demanding, ungrateful, you know, m mother in ill health. And, and now you're looking after me. So we do trade roles and do these Absolutely. things. So I share my story about my husband and that unidentified, but extremely potent, strong grief energy that I felt shortly after marriage, because that's the same kind of circumstance when it got anchored in another timeline. Wow. How oh, completely amazing. What an amazing story. I love that. And, um, you know, you had the, the bravery to face what had happened without telling yourself, oh, just get past it. You really wanted to know what's the seed of this. Yes. Fantastic. Well, what are some simple and practical ways that the average person can release the energy of grief if they really feel they're carrying that? Most of us are to one degree or another. Y yes. Um, well, one thing is if you have an awareness of who you're grieving for. Um, loved ones that you miss dearly or animal companions that were very precious to you and the grief for a loss of an animal companion grief is grief is grief and yeah. so you know it's just as potent and for people saying it was just a dog you know they're missing the the point that the energy is real and the compassion is the person ex experiencing this very strong feeling of loss and sadness associated with it so First off, if if it's something, someone we know, remember, I encourage people to create an altar and create a tabletop, put their pictures up, put some things that remind you of them, and then go talk to it every day. Light a candle for five minutes. This is in honor of my dog companion or my mother uh, or a husband or a wife or a sister and talk to them out loud. And say, you know, I really missed you, what I really loved about you. And talk it out. Because in the speaking it out, you're bringing your God self in. You're bringing your own soul vibration through. And that frequency is going to work on you. It's healing. And it will tend to bring up the emotion if you just go, well, I see their picture. I don't really want to think about it. And I quickly move on with my day and want to do something else. It's very different than if you come and stop and spend five minutes and say what I really appreciated about you was, or what I really miss about our not being able to hug anymore is this, or what I really miss is these conversations we used to have about. And so um, I can tell I'm empathing the grief in the listening group that I can really feel it, right? And so... Um, to allow ourselves to acknowledge, honor, and speak into it uh, will, will tend to be quite moving and tears will flow. The other thing for people to realize is that when people pass over, the feelings that they have about the person who's passed over are sometimes conflicted. Let's say it's a parent or an ex you know, an ex-spouse, say, uh, or, or a spouse. Sometimes people's relationship with someone that was dear to them in their their life is also conflicted, that they have they miss them, uh, but they might also still have some anger or frustration about events that occurred. And because a person feels conflicted, and then they look at that and they say, well, gosh, it's not good that I feel angry still at them about this. I should only be feeling grief and loss. Well, no, that's not the way it works out sometimes. 
if I've got unresolved resentment or anger or frustration or even rage about something, it, all of it needs to be honored and dealt with. So getting in front of the altar and saying, you know what, the things that I can remember some moments that I got so angry when we were talking about this and this moment, not you made me feel angry to project it onto them, but to say, I can remember a moment where you and I were discussing this and, you know, you weren't honoring me in this way. And I felt so angry or you as a father was controlling and telling me what to do, you know, and I didn't appreciate that. And I'm sovereign and, you know, I wanted to be myself and you were insisting this other thing um, to to acknowledge it, speak it out and clear it and blaze a violet flame through it. Rama's reports, you know, blaze a violet flame, blaze a violet flame. Yes, blaze the violet flame and transmute the anger, but acknowledge it and then transmute it. And then you'll find, ah, now I am able to recall and talk about and speak into what I did appreciate about this person, even though they were highly controlling and as a child didn't let me do this and that that I wanted to do or didn't support my artistic career or didn't support that once I've spoken into the anger now I can come back and say well I learned some things from this relationship I learned that I don't like it when other people tell me what to do well that's a good thing to learn we're sovereign beings of light and we should follow our own light and our own joy and our own heart and if other people have opinions about what we're doing, they're welcome to their opinions and they don't have anything to do with us. So then we can just move on and make our own choices. So that conflicted emotions about someone who's passed is often a recipe for not resolving the grief because one needs to also get into the, the anger, resentment or whatever was there love it all to completion, forgive it all, blaze a violet flame through it all, <laughs> and it it will lighten and lift. And then the anger part is typically stored in the liver. And often I find stored in the jaw. I'm so angry. And, uh, you know, I wanted to speak in anger and I didn't speak or I did speak in anger. Well, then there's that anger energy in the jaw that can result in an unhealthy jaw, which means then the roots of the teeth are sitting in angry energy. And now we get tooth infections. And wow. you know, so all of that is throat chakra stuff. So anger, stones and bones are record keepers. So the bones in our body record these emotions and record these records and can store unprocessed energy. Or typically, sadness, grief tend to be stored in the organs, the soft tissue, lungs, the sadness in the heart. Um, but anger is often in a bone, liver as an organ, or in the bone. Wow, that is fascinating. Well, can you um, share an energy process with us to lift and dissolve these lingering energies uh, of grief? And um, this is just a short process, but I... I have a feeling everyone will find it very helpful. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. I'd be happy to. Uh, so if everyone would like to just take one hand and put it over your heart, close your eyes if you feel comfortable, take a, a nice deep breath in and just get present with yourself. Just breathing nice and slow and just say, hmm, is it possible that I have some unprocessed grief or sadness? about some person who is no longer in my life that I'm, I notice there's some sadness about, an animal companion that I love dearly that was very challenging for you to say goodbye and to acknowledge that pet's passing. Could be a place, place you loved, circumstances, parents, required you to move from some place you dearly loved and you had to release and let go of that experience a job you really loved that concluded and you no longer had those beautiful co-workers and that lovely job where you just love being of service but things changed and that ended 
So just choose something or multiple things and use this opportunity to tune in to your emotional body, your little one inside, and allow yourself to notice, is there some sadness in your heart? Is there some grief that you haven't completely processed? Is there some deep aching longing for something that is no longer in your life? When you think of that dear departed person and you think, oh, this is a moment where I would have picked up the phone and called her or him and they're not there and I feel sad that I don't get to share this with them. Just to notice that sadness. And let's, I'm going to ask the angels to come forward and each person's guides and healing team to support them. And we'll use the violet flame to blaze through and gently, gently, tenderly loosen and dissolve with the violet flame, which is love, pink ray of mother's love, blue ray of father God's love, gold secret sauce, as St. Germain says to me, powerful transmutational energy. And we bring that violet flame through those sadness feelings, loosen them and allow that energy to come up. And if you're aware that some sadness as you're being present to it is coming up, going across the collarbone, coming up through the mouth, I invite you to tip your chin down just a wee bit, third of a an inch, half an inch, and let the mouth fall open and let that energy come up and fall out. The mouth's a portal. And so when we let the energy just come up and fall out of a relaxed jaw and a relaxed mouth. So everyone just breathe your way through it. You're all doing amazing. There is energy coming through. And now you might be present to that kind of lump of energy right at the base of your sternum. That's the heart chakra energy that is getting our attention. So we'll blaze some more energy and violet flame and love through that with your guides and angels holding you in a beautiful field of loving compassion. As you feel, remember, and experience the sadness of loss. And at a point, we get to the realization that, oh, I can still talk to my mother. All I have to do is have that altar speak her name, look at her picture, and say, hey, mom, I would love to have a cup of tea with you. So I'm going down to make a cup of tea. And join me, please, at the kitchen table and let's sit. And I'll speak and you can just send back love and I'll just feel your presence. Yes, they're not there in the physical. You can't hug them anymore. But they're always with you and available to speak to you. Feel Feel their presence, even if you're not yet. You're saying to yourself, I, I don't yet hear them. It's okay. Just ask for them to be present. They will be present. You will receive and feel their love, even if you don't yet perceive a message or a response to what you're saying. And they love to have us do this, sit and have a cup of tea with them. Mom, I've got some things I want to share about my week. So bring your loved ones in, chat with them. They absolutely adore us reconnecting in this way and have the same kind of conversation you would have had if they were sitting across from you in the physical. And you'll start to feel that closeness and connection and realize that they're never truly gone. They have changed form and you cannot hug them anymore. That's real. And for a lot of people, that's a big loss. And yet, we can still communicate, we can still connect, we can still share love. All right, thank you. When you're all ready, just honoring what you felt, the energy still rising. And if you find that due to this process we've done that a little more emotion needs to come up and out, wants to come through, either tonight or in the coming days, just allow it. 
because what we're feeling, we're releasing, what we're feeling, we're healing. And just breathe, let it come up and out, and then anchor back in some love and a loving thought about what you most enjoyed or something you cherished about whomever or whatever animal companion you miss. Remember the joyful moments and that will fill your heart back up with loving memories, more joyful moments. And if you all would like to notice, like I see a lot more light streaming out of, and I can see all of you, whether you're on camera or not, uh, for all the listeners, I can see and feel you. A lot more light is streaming through your body and being emanated, but because of your willingness to go within and feel something and release it. So thank you. Namaste. Wow. Really, really wonderful. Thank you so much, Janet. I w I'm in shock at all the things that came up. Hmm. You know, I moved when I was 12 and I hated the new place and I missed living in Maine and friends who had, I, I lost, you know, I don't like to say died, but they transitioned and um, a beloved animal a uh, dog I had great love for and all this started coming up I was shocked I thought maybe one or two things but <laughs> hmm. well thank you for being well, so willing to you know stop and be present with all that is such a lovely example for everyone else uh, because only when we stop and reflect and really go within then we realize wow I still have sadness yeah. you know about this person or when I speak about them my voice cracks well, that tells us that there's just a little bit more, you know, that wants to come up and be honored. And it's all perfect. And hopefully everybody has now long since got over the, you know, it's not okay to cry business because <laughs> it's very healing, you know, to stop, let the voice crack, let the energy move. Um, and um, then we heal it. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, if anyone would like to call in, if you've got a specific issue and you would, you're would, you wondering what the energy basis of it is, particularly a health issue, Janet is great with those, please do call in if you'd like. The numbers to call for Station 1 again are 888-627-6008. Uh, That's 888-627-6008. Or you can call 323-744-4831. That's 323-744-4831. Um, so Penny, you have a question for Janet? Wonderful. Yes, I, yes, yes <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. Janet, I'd, I'd like you to speak again to the uh thing that you explained about the throat and and the and the heart and so on uh, because suddenly uh, today i've had a sore throat a bit of a sore throat and right now it just kind of flared up again so there's some relationship and i i didn't understand it past too fast okay penny let me just tune into what i'm feeling in your field so you were describing um Let's not focus on the mind's confusion. Let's come focus on what you're feeling. So what are you feeling right now? Um, well, I've been crying while you were talking. I was thinking about my mom. And okay, beautiful, my dear. My don't got sore. Yeah, don't don't speak then for a minute. Because uh, if we start talking, sometimes we pop up into the mind and then we shut down the emotion and we stop the release. So just stay with a hand on your heart, allowing yourself to even feel a little more deeply what, uh, what you were feeling and the re realization that there was some emotion there about your mom passing over that hadn't been acknowledged. So you described that your throat got sore. So if I say the word sore, S-O-R-E, it has two meanings. It can refer to pain, but it can also refer to, I'm really sore at you, some anger. So when you reflect on your relationship with your mom, are, are there some moments where you really felt some anger in communication with her or as a result of what she said or did at some moment in your life? 
no, not really. Um, she was one of my stalwart supporters, but I just had the feeling that I hadn't talked to her enough in her, in the years that she was alone without my dad. All right. She was really lonely. Uh, All and right. now I know what that means. Okay. So just breathe for a minute. Are you willing to let yourself off the hook because this, oh gosh, the remorse, the regret, I wish I had, if only I had called the person more, spent more time with them. This is often another thing that comes when a person passes over and then we go, gosh, did I miss moments? Should I have offered more support? Should we have spoken more? And that's a form of not loving oneself. It's a judgment of self saying I did something wrong or I should have done something differently. So just just for a moment, just allow yourself to accept that you were doing the very best you could at all moments and you were being guided at all moments and you had many things going on in your life and you contacted your mother and enjoyed time with her as often as you were guided. And only in retrospect do we sometimes say, wow, I really realize now life is short and I only wish that I had had more beautiful, intimate moments or provided more support to this loved one. So just allow yourself to let any. So, okay. So now I'm seeing it's a little sore at yourself that you did not speak with her more often. So just let, any judgment of self come up and through and dissolve into the violet flame. And now the gift is to realize that she can hear everything you're going to tell her. So feel free to invite her for tea and say you, you've got some things that didn't get said. You didn't get enough time with her. You'd like to make up some of that lost time and have a little tea party and offer her some of the things that you wished you had said before, say them now. It's not too late. She would love to hear whatever you've got to share with her. I see your beautiful presence coming in to be with you, Penny. All right. Thank you, Penny, for the question. Just allow yourself to be with what you're feeling and you know, you just may need some more time to acknowledge there was that extra emotion that wasn't entirely processed, and that's perfect. And what time is, you know, what's the right time to feel what we're feeling in the moment we're feeling it is perfect. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. thank you. Thank you so much thank for the you. question. Wonderful. Thank you, Penny. Thank you, Janet. We have Pamela from Arizona on line one. Pamela, are you still there? Yes, I am. All right. You have a question for Janet? Uh, yes. Um, I, I There's a couple of very strong physical sensations that I've been having lately. Um, one of them is on the left side over where my, my left breast is and my heart over my heart. Um, just this pain in that area and this overall sense of just extreme fatigue. Okay, Pamela, I'm turning in, uh, tuning in now. Thank you. I'm just going to take the one in the interest of the time that we have available today. Okay. So let's take, take your hands, rub them together hard, your palms together. Wake up your hand chakras because we can do our own healing. And take your hand now and put one hand on that spot and direct light into that area where you're feeling a sensation. Did did this recently come up, Pamela, kind of out of the blue, it's, or is it? It's, no, it's, it's been happening, I'd say, the last. My I just felt very numb in the heart area, very numb. And then as I was processing different emotions and feelings and letting go of things, this pain started coming up more persistently. All right. And I haven't been able to clear it. Okay, under your hand, can you use your inner eyes and tell me if you see any object piercing through your heart? Mm -hmm. 
because I'm seeing an arrow. Yeah. Um, yes. So let's let's take the arrow out. It's a it's another timeline trauma, um, and it did result in death. So we'll just pull the arrow out, Pamela, Pamela, and then we'll okay. bring back in, and I'm going to clear the energies from the other timeline and bring you back to this present moment. So I'd like you to put your hand on your heart and mm -hmm. and maybe actually what I'm hearing is move it down to your, your hip crease where your torso meets your upper leg and put your hand down there the and left. say, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm the I'm sorry, on the left? Whichever side you'd like. Whichever, and just do it intuitively. Whichever hand okay. and whichever hip crease. And, and now affirm, I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. Okay, you're doing great. So we spot another timeline trauma. We want to bring you back to this present moment while I work on clearing the energies from the other timeline trauma. And, but we want you in the present moment. So you're acknowledging in this moment, I am safe. No one's shooting an arrow through your chest, right? In this moment, right? right. This right. is another moment of now. So we want to bring you back to this present moment and have you affirm, I am safe. I am safe. Just keep breathing. There's an awful lot of energy from, basically it relates to the trauma of having your life snuffed out in a violent way. The one example was the arrow through your chest. And uh, any other lifetime where you had your life end quite violently, a lot of energy, feel a big knot of energy at your uh, base of your sternum in your heart. And now that energy is starting to rise. So the energy is releasing, coming up through your throat. You'll feel above your collarbone and like under your ears. Uh, big energy is coming up through there. And I may feel it more intensely than you are. But as I share what I'm feeling, then you can tune in to, to that. And we're just clearing, releasing from your etheric body. So I'm uh, directing to clear every record, memory, pattern, and trace of energies from violent and traumatic loss of life or significant serious energy from this and all timelines across all time, space, and dimension. And for others on the call, this clearing is for you as well. Pamela kindly brought this up, but many people may have had some of these kind of traumatic endings. Lots and lots and lots of energy there. So just keep breathing and relaxing. Now I'm sensing a big wave of energy coming up and out of your back of your heart chakra and solar plex. And of course, the strong energy I'm feeling is from the entire group that are listening now or will listen to the replay. So just keep breathing and keep reaffirming that in this moment, I'm safe. And anything you might be feeling is just arising to shake out, come out in whatever way is perfect for you to express it. What are you feeling, Pamela, as I'm working with this energy with you? I'm feeling a different sensation in different areas in my body, like my jaws and my teeth, my arms, um, just all over. There are yeah. different places that are um, shift. The energy is shifting. Yeah. You, you as a soul have apparently experienced quite a number of violent and traumatic well, you know, deaths. Well, and what's curious is that I've been having this feeling of like so much stiffness and now 
with the work we're doing, I'm thinking, you know, it's like maybe a memory of rigor mortis setting in. It's um, so I'm grateful to release this and let it go finally. Yeah, and just trust when you um, have a an image like that, you're tracking back to another timeline and you're getting a, a clue, an insight. So you go, whoa, I guess some of that energy I'm feeling is at a moment where my body moved from alive into a stiffer, rigored state. So that tells me, you know, your your awareness, the etheric body will remember all the moments, pre-birth and post-mortem. And all of that's available in the record because your soul experienced it all. So um, that's fascinating that you're getting some glimpses of energies even after the physical body technically died. Yeah, it feels almost like I had a curiosity about that transition period. And I may have mm. stayed in longer and not left. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. away. And, and some souls do this. Um, choose not to depart so i i often find working with a client maybe there's an entity in their home and i see who is this and why are you still here and sometimes it's somebody they collected you know a, i just had a client who collected a seven and ten year old soul who they had passed and their parents were crying and sobbing in grief and saying please don't go please don't go you know, you, how could this be happening? And so the children stayed oh. uh, and they stayed to support their parents. But then the parents completed the grieving process. But now the children's souls were suspended in the wrong plane. So then my client, who is a beautiful, lovely soul, collected these two souls. And prior to us having a session, because I was going to notice. And so then we were able to get uh, call in the archangels and Archangel Raziel in particular to escort these children back up to the, uh, you know, the higher planes where their 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 path here and their time here is complete. How are you feeling, Pamela? There's still a lot of energy moving. Yeah. So I'm going to ask because we're we're to the top of the hour and we're going to need to wrap. I'm going to ask your guides, angels, and healing team, Archangel Raphael, um, Archangel Michael, to continue to surround you in protective light, and Mother Mary and Kuan Yin to support you. So you can just go take some more time to lie down. Know that you're they're going to continue to work with you and support you in completing and your release and that you're held in love and all is well. And just, just allow the process. And then in the morning, do something wonderful, juicy that you love. Go out in nature, get your feet in some water, get a little extra sunshine, feed yourself some pomegranate seeds or something that just feels marvelous, fresh berries or something. And just love on yourself because you have had a huge release of energy. And I'm sure you're gonna be feeling a lot lighter tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. And thank you for being such a fabulous surrogate for others, which is why it was so perfect that you had such intense experiences to share with us. It's, it's a great gift to others that you step forward. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Really wonderful. Thank you so much, Pamela, and thank you, Janet. Um, I feel like we've learned so much and we have all of us processed some dense emotion we weren't even expecting to meet with tonight, let alone let go of. Uh, Mike is saying in the chat, so nice to see you again, Janet, and it has been absolutely fantastic. It's always brilliant to have you here, and I hope that you'll come back very soon. And again, Janet um, can be found at heal.me. And just put in Janet Dorr, D as in David, O-E-R-R. -R. Do that search in their little search uh, box there. And Janet's name will pop up. Click onto that. You'll be able to uh, see some of what she offers and uh, and book from there. Isn't that right, Janet? People can book yeah. a session from there. Yeah. Um, testimonials are phenomenal. I'm one of them. 
<laughs> uh, I, I, my sessions with Janet have uncovered so much and shown me so much and helped me to solve so much that I uh, am just so full of thanks uh, that um, that I even heard of her. And you will see her on Telesummits. I think you were you recently on the U Wealth Revolution with Dara Berenzende, uh, who Darius, sorry, Berenzende, who is so wonderful. Um, congrats on that because that. That was one of the earliest telesummits that came around about almost 20 years ago now. And I remember when I started listening to his work and um, he just has amazing people on. So um, look into that U Wealth Revolution and also go to our show's page and um, to get the gift again, bit.ly forward slash transform hyphen your hyphen energy. Okay, so, wow, so fantastic. Uh, thank you, Times A Million. Please come back again, Janet, and um, many blessings and much love. And uh, let's see here, Dawn, music, please. I always forget to put that in the chat a bit sooner than I should, but I think we're ready for our music, Dawn. Um, unless any of the co-hosts would like to thank Janet as well. Uh, yep. Thank you so much to all our listeners. We send much love and many blessings, and we'll see you next week here on A Night at the Roundtable, bbsradio.com, Station 1.